Ollie is Ollie's up the up the yada yahoo. Ink to make the yada zinc the ump the ray yahoo. Wing wang tricky tricky foo foo juicy woozy skizzle wazzle wang tang orky porky dominarky redlands. Ra ra redlands. Yeah! Did I get it right? There isn't any time you don't talk about faculty because they were fabulous in the classroom, because they were kind, because they stimulated people, because they actually told somebody they could be better than they were and gave them confidence. When I first came here, and I had a huge culture shock because in Fontana it's predominantly Latinos and African Americans. And so things were just so different. The way that people spoke was different. Um, the different types of music, the different types of humor. I was just surrounded by difference of opinions and difference of backgrounds. So that's basically what your college experience is about, in my opinion, is becoming more and more open-minded to different things and being willing to change some of your ideas. A lot of people think that diversity is just cultural. It's not just about culture, it's, it's about sexual orientation, it's about your physical status, it's about your age, it's about so many things. I realized how valuable Redlands was when I was in medical school. I had a real confidence in my abilities. I had a real confidence in how I could think. There was no confusion about the mission. The mission was about growing up and learning. I always tell my husband who graduated from UCLA, I said, I went to college, you went to a city. I just think there really is something special about candidates that come out of these programs. Even if you come here for a teacher credentialing program and you don't necessarily do your undergrad here, you still get that feel of being in a place where you're nurtured and a part of this Redlands family. It sounds almost too corny to be true, but here it is. When I leave class, I can't wait for the next one to start. There are some fascinating characters on this campus. Kevin O'Neill comes to mind. Bill McDonald comes to mind. Chris Nagel comes to mind. I'm surrounded by a lot of new faculty members at this school as okay. well. So, next group, yes. what do you got? Energy, I like it. Lots of new blood that are improving this campus yearly. It's almost as if no matter what they say, it's meaningful. It could be about history, it could be about philosophy, but it's something that you want to pay attention to. What I got out of Redlands in the deepest sense was to take the limits off my thinking. They're still teaching kids, don't let anybody else tell you what you can and cannot do. And I busted out of the gate and thought, well, well I could do anything pretty much that I want to do, so let's just go out and start doing it. We're growing um, baby greens now and herbs. Roy Yamaguchi from Roy's restaurant came out to the farm one day and he, and he goes, you know what, Dean, we'll take all your herbs. So we came up with this mix of 12 different items for baby salad greens. And from there, it just grew and grew. Today, we service about 120 restaurants. Coming from an island environment too, you know, it's, it's very different. The only time I've been off of this is actually the four years I was at Redlands. And, and we had a great time, besides the schoolwork. Ten, nine, ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. How did I get involved with America's Space Program? I remember when I was a kid, my mother would wake us up and I saw every Mercury launch, every Gemini launch, and every Apollo launch on our little black and white TV in our living room. And I will never forget when we landed on the moon, my mother did not cook for four days. That's one small step for me. When I first got to Houston, I was very fortunate because I had the opportunity to work with the men who put us on the moon and learn so much about teamwork and how do you accomplish a project, really working together to make something important happen. 
reading, thinking, analyzing, debating are all skills that I think the University of Redlands education helped me to develop. There is poetry, real poetry, historical poetry, in the location of the National Museum of the American Indian on the National Mall. We were the last to get here. In many respects, we should have been the first. And yet, we end up occupying one of the first places on the Mall. Finally, at last, you see the National Museum of the American Indian sitting in equality. I can't say with legitimacy that I literally grew up in a four-room log cabin. Redlands was a place of immense liberation for me. It was an opening of my life to the outside world beyond Muskogee, beyond the state of Oklahoma, uh, that was extremely critical. They opened my eyes to the world in ways that have never left me and have everything to do with what I did as a lawyer representing Indian tribes and organizations and as the director of the National Museum of the American Indian. It was a pivot point in my life, an extremely important pivot point. <laughs> Redlands was there to not only hone your mind and your intellect, which Jasper Field said, touching the mind and the heart, but that it was an attempt to have you become a good person. Redlands people generally have a pretty fair emphasis on what are you going to be as a human being. That skein of thought has never left the university's fiber. When I first got here in 1983, the likes of Frank Soreo, Jim Verdick, uh, Lee Fulmer had just passed away, and of course, Ted Runner. Some tremendous coaches that taught not just the great experience on the field or the court, but also to learn the life values through that experience. Fifty-one members of our football team just returned from helping with Katrina relief efforts down in New Orleans. We spent 13 straight days mucking out how 